Hi, this is Scott Gamble, president of Gamble Music Production and Archive in Columbia, Alabama. We can be found at Gamble Music Production and Archive blogspot com and we also have Facebook and Twitter pages as well. Those will be posted from time to time throughout the video and at the end of each video. This is my first of three videos that tell a story of great importance, especially to those people who cannot find a certain song or piece of music that they've been looking for. By all means, use my errors and my obstacles in a framed colloquialism, learn from other people's mistakes, I made several throughout my music career. This first of three videos is tracking down of an opera that I heard in 1993. It became such an obsession that I lived and breathed it for almost three years. This story, like others, would not be a great story unless it had an overwhelming outcome at the end. And that's what you're about to hear. The music background that you're hearing is the overture to the actual opera that we're going to be talking about in the next three videos. Oedipus at Colonus or Oedipo a Colon. You remember from your mythological Greek that Antigone leads her blind father Oedipus on a trek to find light. That's just a small clue of what's uh, what's going to be in the in video two and three. I thought it'd only be fair to treat you to a, a brief synopsis of why I think opera started. Now, most musicologists will say that opera started in and around the early 1600s. I agree to disagree. I believe that opera started in and around the finding of the Greek plays. I, being of Greek descent, uh, would say that I'm going to probably be right and I hope that you agree. The first thing we need to do is to ascertain what opera is. Now I believe, like I say, that it went back as far as 550 BC and 220 BC because this is the actual finding of the Greek theater. In the city-state of Athens between this period of time, this was a significant time for the cultural, political, and military power to peak at itself. And this time was called the Festival Time, or Dionysi, which was honored by the god Dionysus. The tragedies, or tragic plays, would come later in the 6th century BC, and the comedy, uh, comic operas would come back into the 486 BC time frame. There are several words that I want to show significance to. The word orchestra, it now means obviously where there's musical instruments playing. Uh, in early Greek, orchestra or orchestra meant that the playwrights began using backdrops or scenic walls that hung from the back of the stage. This part was called the, the orchestra. There's another word that comes from the word Greek word skein, S-K-E-N-E, -E, which then derived at what word we use in, in motion pictures as a scene. So I found it pretty cool to know that there were difference, differences in words but similarities uh, in these words. Finally, let's discuss in and around the 425 B.C. period, these plays, these Greek plays, had choruses that were attached to the plays consisting of about 12 to 15 people. They performed in these plays for accompanied by music beginning in the morning lasting until evening so you see some of these plays actually lasted from 8 to 12 hours a day some of us can't even watch a 30-minute sitcom and uh, and stay glued to the television so imagine 8 to 12 hours being in one of these Greek plays anyway last of all is the word they're on this is the natural slope of the theater and at the foot of the hill of this natural slope where the watching place was the word Theron, or later became the word theater. Thanks for listening to video number one. At the end now is posted our webpage and our Facebook information. Please go and visit us there. Now watch video two. I think you'll be fascinated as to what you're going to hear.